Okay, hi guys, how is it going? So I wanted to go into a little bit more depth with the uh, dynamic range between the Sony Alpha 7 Mark III and the GH5. I had a very quick look at this before, but it, it was just a very quick look and I wanted to do slightly more controlled tests just to kind of get our head around the, the different profiles and the dynamic range and all that, that kind of thing between these two different cameras. So the, the big two players here between the most amount of dynamic range out of both cameras is the GH5 in V-Log and the S-Log3 in the Sony. Uh, S-Log2 is pretty similar, uh, you know, it's not a huge difference, but definitely with the Panasonic, the V-Log is the best uh, contender for maximum dynamic range. Uh, and wanted, what I wanted to do is just go through a setup here, 25mm uh, on the GH5, 50mm on the, the Sony, um, same f-stop, same ISO, uh, and then compare it at standard EV and then a, a stopover, plus two, plus three, plus four stops. So let's just have a quick look at what we've got here and then hopefully it will kind of make sense what I'm doing and why I'm doing it. One thing I should say uh, is really quite important with the Panasonic, with the GH5, GH5S, when you flick over into V-Log uh, from any other profile, it automatically knocks a stop off of your exposure reading on the camera in the camera's metering. So this is really quite important. So, um, uh, you know, the Sonys don't do this. When you go from, you know, Cine 2 over to S-Log on the Sony, the metering is the metering, it doesn't change. Uh, but with the Panasonic, if you have, you know, the same scene, same camera settings, and you go from one profile to the other, it knocks a stop off for you because it knows that you should be exposing a bit brighter than you would in the other profiles. So it can be a little bit misleading, so bear, that, bear this in mind, but I've, I've factored this in with this reads as. Uh, so if you're using the camera metering system, then this is what we're talking about here, the reads as minus one. So basically EV0 on the Panasonic will read as minus one. So what we have, ISO 800 on both of these, this is the S-Log. So this is the EV0 on both of them. So both at the same f-stop, same uh, ISO, same light, uh, same shutter speed, everything at one fiftieth of a second. And if we have a look at the, the, the scopes over here on the left, ignore these little spikes up here. This is actually just the, the, the copy on the screen. This is our image here. Uh, but if we compare those two at uh, EV0, we can see really, really quite similar. Our big patch here over towards the left in the center of the scopes, this is our gray card basically. This is the main thing that I'm using for metering. And as you can see between the uh, Sony there and the Panasonic at zero uh, EV. Uh, it's pretty much, you know, bang on um, the same area. So I know that I'm getting, you know, I'm getting everything right in camera. So most people would agree that you wouldn't expose the Sony at EV zero. You would expose it at plus one, plus two. Same thing goes for the Panasonic. Even though um, this is EV uh, zero, like I said, it reads as minus one on the screen. So again, bear that in mind. So let's go up a stop here. So EV plus uh, one on the Sony and S-Log3 now. We've got, as we can see, we've got tons of uh, headroom still. You know, most, most S-Log uh, sort of, you know, experienced S-Log users would say that it's still a bit underexposed for S-Log, so you're still getting a bit of noise uh, in the shadows. And with our Panasonic, if we have a look, yeah, we've got plenty of room in our highlights still and it's not too bad in the shadows. You know, this is a bit more closer to the sweet spot for the, the GH5 because our highlights get cut off sooner, as we'll, we will see one moment. Let's move on. So this is now at plus two, plus two stops. So this is probably the sweet spot. Most people would agree is the, kind of the sweet spot for S-Log, S-Log 2, S-Log 3. We've still got plenty of room in these highlights. You know, it, the highlights, if we just zoom to the end here, they really start to get clipped up around about sort of 88 IRE on the Sony. If we compare that to the GH5 quickly, sorry, I'm skipping ahead, but just to talk about this this highlight line, it get, comes in, I mean, it, it's, it's meant to be around about 78, 79%, but for my test, it's more around about sort of 76. So it's, it's quite a bit lower than the Sony. We can see all those, uh, clipped highlights along that line there. So let's come back to our plus uh, two. As we can see, our Sony still has plenty of um, headroom on this, around this bowl area here, uh, and around this white bit here, and around our little Lego character. That's what we focused on, by the way, this little Lego character on top of the lemon. Again, this isn't about noise, this isn't about sharpness, this is just about dynamic range in the profiles, so don't worry about those factors, but that is what I focused on, in case you wanted to know. If we hop over to our uh, GH5 now, we can see we're actually starting to clip. So this, these are both at plus two uh, EV, so the same settings on both cameras. 
and we can see we are actually starting to get clipping on the GH5. So considerably uh, sooner on the GH5 that we're getting our highlights clipped. If we hop over into 100% and look at our little chap here, he's starting to get blown out. And if we compare that to the uh, Sony, we've got a bit more retention of those highlights around all these this bowl here and around the Lego character. There's just a bit more highlight information. You can see that's completely blown out there in that bowl. Let's go back to uh, our main scene and now let's have a look at plus three. Uh, now with the Sony plus three we're starting to get clipping but only just, we're only just starting to get it around this bowl area, area here and around the uh, the little Lego figure. Now if you now compare this to the uh, GH5 at plus three, remember this is reading at plus two on the screen but it is technically it's plus three overexposure and now we're in serious trouble on the, uh, the GH5. If we have a look at this uh, um, 100% again, our Lego figure is just gone, our lemon's really getting caned here. Let's compare that to our Sony at the same uh, plus three. And our Sony is really doing quite well, it is getting getting blown. If we have a look at our scopes over to the left here, we can see we're starting to get clipping on the figure, we're starting to get clip on the, on the bowl. But it's a lot more controllable if you could just compare that to the GH5 again and look at that Lego guy, I mean he is just gone. That is information that you're never going to see again. Um, and if we look at our scopes, it tells the same story. We're really getting our head completely cut off there at the highlights. So it's um, not a great story in the GH5, but if we have a look at our Sony on the scopes, yeah, we've, you know, we're getting clipping, but only just. Now let's have a look at plus four. You know, the, the, these would be, you know, mistakes. These, you know, these, are, these are bad captures now. So we're, we're in the territory of, oh, I've got it wrong in camera. How can I retrieve this sort of area now? Uh, and in the Sony, you know, you're getting, you're getting some nasty blown highlights there. Uh, but only just, you know, we're still getting some information there on the lemon. Look at this lemon, it's really actually not that bad. Uh, and the Lego guy, he's not that bad at plus four. I mean, you know, this is a bad exposure, but it's almost, Look at it, if we look at it full scene, that's almost recoverable. I mean, we've got some, especially around this, um, the, the silver lens here, you know, it, it's clipping nastily. But, you know, let's compare that to the GH5 at plus, um, plus four. And there we go, you know, we've, we've absolutely had it there. It's looking just completely unusable. You know, we've got our lemon is completely blown, our bowl is completely blown. You know, we've got horrible highlights all over the place. So again, I'll just compare that. So to plus four on the Sony, to plus four on the GH5. So basically, have a look at the scopes again over to the, over to the left. There's the GH5, flick back to the Sony. As you can see, we've got a lot more headroom there and a lot less clipping of those highlights going on in the Sony compared to the uh, Panasonic. So uh, there you guys, I mean, that kind of tells you what you need to know. I mean, in terms of the other end of things, the, the Sony does have a sweet spot a bit higher, around about the plus two, where the shadows um, are not too noisy, basically. So you, know, you can still retrieve information from the shadows and it not be too noisy. Panasonic, you know, has, you know, actually slightly cleaner shadows, believe it or not, even though it's, you know, not a great high, high ISO camera. Uh, as long as you get that sweet spot dead right and you're only just about between one and one and a half, maybe, maybe two stops over, uh, and you'll kind of get slightly cleaner shadows at the GH5. Whereas with the, um, the the Sony, you actually need to go to almost plus two, two and a half to get the same level of uh, clean shadows. So in terms of the shadows, they're not there's not a huge amount of difference in it. You may possibly have to just raise that Sony slightly more to get those cleaner blacks uh, or dark blacks. But at the other end of the scale, in terms of the, the highlights, the Sony has way more headroom, um, which is, you know, something that I've known for ages. I've been using Sony cameras and Panasonic cameras for a long time. Uh, the Sony's, uh, you know, full frame camera with, you know, it's going to have much more um, headroom in the highlights. And it does, you know, these tests just kind of uh, confirm that for me. It's nothing new for me, but I just thought it might be interesting for you guys to see the difference. Bear in mind, you know, like I say, this is reading as plus three on the GH5, where it is technically it's plus four overexposed. So keep that in mind when I'm talking about these. I've left it on the screen now so you can see, but that is, you know, a big factor. If you didn't factor that in, then obviously, you know, the GH5 would be blowing out a whole extra stop sooner than the uh, the Sony. But if you're matching the, the camera settings, which is what I'm doing here in terms of 802.5 and then if we look at the same plus two on the Sony, it's 802.5. So we're matching the, the camera settings.
you know, don't get me wrong, if you get them both exposed right, you know, roughly sort of between zero and plus one on the, the GH5, uh, you've got loads of headroom there and you've got lots of sort of um, flexibility for getting a great shot. And the same with Sony, if you're going at around about sort of plus two, maybe plus three, maybe a push, you know, around about that sort of mark, you've got, a, you know, a lovely image out of both of these cameras. But if you get it wrong, or if you suddenly like turn your camera towards a window, and you know, you're suddenly in a backlit situation and you've not had time to change your settings or something, you know, if you get things wrong with the Sony, I would say there's almost a stop and a half of maybe even two stops of flexibility on the Sony over the GH5 in terms of uh, losing those highlights. So, you know, that is a factor, but don't get me wrong, you know, I still love the GH5, I'm going to keep the GH5, it can do things that the Sony cannot. Another thing, thing I should mention, I've done this test in a few different ways, I actually did it uh, with 10-bit uh, files and 8-bit files, and I did it with uh, shots with people in shot and, and other things like that. So I've kind of done, you know, it's, I've done more than what I'm just showing you here. I just thought this is a, a, a perfect sort of example which shows it quite clearly. So yeah, so the 10-bit files don't really make too much of a difference on this. Uh, you know, they give you a bit more color information, but your highlights are still going to go. Your dynamic range isn't any, any different in 10-bit to 8-bit. What you're looking at right now is 8-bit on both, and it's 4K on both, and it's 25p on both. So, you know, they're kind of matched. Um, obviously, the GH5 does have some extra settings, extra quality settings that the, the Sony doesn't, uh, but it doesn't actually affect the dynamic range. So, you know, I've done the test in the 10-bit as well, in the higher bit rates and all the rest of it, and it doesn't affect what we're, what we're talking about here, which is the dynamic range of both cameras in their highest dynamic range profile. Anyway, guys, I hope that was useful. I don't think I learned too much. This is kind of information that I already knew, but I hopefully it kind of got across some things that may be of use to you. And yeah, you know, also might kind of, if you've got either of these cameras, regardless of whether you're comparing them or not, might also sort of get your head around where is the sweet spot, where should I be exposing my V-log or where should I be exposing my uh, S-log? You know, there's gonna be better videos uh, for you on that subject. But this hopefully will confirm some of your um, previous findings. Anyway, there you go, guys. That was it. Uh, I hope that was useful. And there you go. Yep, the Sony does kick ass on the highlights, I'm afraid. Um, but, you know, like you say, if you get them exposure right in both cameras, you can get a great image out of both cameras. Okay, guys, I shall see you next time. Bye.